Viewer discretion is advised. The alarms went off, and Builder Bear was spotted with its creations rampaging through Site 24. Quick, we need to contain it right away. We can't let it disappear again. Wait, where are you going? A bear with colorful patches slipped through Dr. Manson's legs. It ran across the hallway as fast as its stubby legs could, making a beeline towards the injured personnel. It took one look at the man's missing limb and immediately fashioned one up with its own material. You're just that selfless, aren't you? Men, I need cover for Kairos over there. I'll go bring any cloth I can find for him to do his work. When Dr. Manson returned with the necessary materials, the bear was nowhere to be seen among the chaos. Following the trail of patched up personnel, he found the bear silently hugging a young boy in a D-Class uniform. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Safe Class Object SCP-2295. SCP-2295, also known as the bear with a heart of patchwork, is a patchwork stuffed bear. It is approximately 18 inches from head to foot and is stuffed with synthetic fiber and cotton. 2295 has a small, anatomically correct pin of a heart on the left side of its thorax and a bow wrapped around its neck. The fabric and color of 2295's patches vary. Tests confirm that no components of 2295 contain any anomalous chemical properties. 2295 goes active when within 7 feet of a human sustaining major trauma to an organ. It will anomalously produce scissors, white thread, and either sewing needles or a crocheting hook from its mouth. Then use any fabric and stuffing within reach to fashion an instance of SCP-2295-1, a patchwork imitation of the subject's organ. 2295-1 vanishes from sight while the subject falls unconscious. It will then replace the subject's damaged organ via anomalous means. The whereabouts of the replaced organs are undetermined. If there is no usable material in close proximity, 2295 will use fabric and stuffing from itself. 2295 regenerates one gram of stuffing every day until completely replacing any lost or used stuffing. Note that fabric used this way does not regenerate, and additional fabric must be placed near 2295 for the purpose of self-mending. There have been no cases of rejected 2295-1 instances and all subjects recorded at the time of writing made full recoveries. Originally, 2295 was just a sentient, plain brown bear doll under the care of a boy named Michael. One day, 2295 found itself lying on wet grass in the yard. The house was on fire. It found an open window and plopped right in. The bear soldiered through the inferno and found Michael lying at the bottom of the stairs, barely moving. The boy was coated head to toe in burns. His hair had been singed off, and what was left of his clothes had fused to his flesh in places. 2295 frantically looked about, searching for something, anything it could use to repair him, but everything was in flames. There was no way to help the boy here. They had to get out. It tried to drag Michael to safety, but it couldn't even lift his arm. As the floor quaked and the ceiling gave, 2295 could do nothing but cry and hug the boy. Together, they plummeted into the earth. The next day, the firefighters couldn't find the boy among the rubble. Sorry, ma'am. We couldn't find your son. Only this. A firefighter handed the woman a damaged teddy bear. As she wept and hugged it, she could feel it hugging her back. Time passed, and 2295 regained consciousness once again, finding itself in front of its own reflection. Patches of colorful cloth had replaced its drab brown body, and a pretty bow to tie the look together. A gentle hand picked it up. It was a man the bear had never seen before. Hope you don't mind my shoddy work. And looky here. He lifted up a card that said, Hello, my name is Kairos. The bear tilted its head and looked at the man in confusion. It's ancient Greek. It means an opportune moment. Figured it suits you. Now you're going to find that perfect opportune moment to swoop in and be there for others where no one else can. The bear nodded gleefully. The man then nestled it affectionately into a box alongside the note. He waved goodbye to the bear and reached down for the lid. 2295 was recovered at the side of a crashed delivery mail van. When authorities arrived, it was found out of the box, sitting next to the injured but patched up driver. Ever since its arrival at the foundation, 2295 has helped many people. You look wonderful. Are these the works of the bear? Yeah, aren't they amazing? It's like getting a tattoo but without the needle stabbing part, just burns. Damn, now my face feels a little bland compared to my body. 
Wouldn't mind getting burned a little more to get more color on my face. <laughs> my heart used to beat like crazy every time I moved a little. Thought I was about to die. But then, I was offered a chance to undergo an operation by the stuffed teddy bear. Now, here I am, feeling better than ever. From the corner of the rim, the bear caught the attention of the D-Class while peeking over the tall crates. It hopped over and they greeted 2295, then embraced one another. Hey, bear! I heard that evil twin brother bear of yours went on a rampage, hurt a lot of people. I'm sure you saved everyone's lives there too, right? Upon hearing that, 2295 appeared saddened and began retreating back to the corner. However, it was intercepted by Dr. Manson. He picked the teddy bear up gently and stroked its head, then rested it on the table. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, fellas, but a young man, one of the D-Class subjects, didn't make it. The D-Classes were in shock. They looked over to the bear in disbelief as it lowered its head and hid itself behind Dr. Manson. How can that be? Ain't that bear right there a magic surgeon or something? Yes, Kairos here is capable of fantastic feats of surgery. There's no doubt about that. Even so, there's a limit to its abilities. You see, he can only replace things that are broken, but not fixing them. The boy suffered severe cerebral hemorrhage during the time when SCP-1048 made its appearance. One of its creations, 1048-C, damn near maimed the poor boy. Kairos tried his hardest to gather what available materials within proximity to initiate repairs. But the young man's life was rapidly fading at the time, so perhaps Kairos didn't have enough time to fashion the necessary parts to replace the faulty ones. Or perhaps it was more complicated than just simply replacing parts. Too many factors at play, Dr. Manson said as he stroked the depressed teddy bear's head. So, could Kairos do anything for the lad before he passed? Kairos conjured a sweet, Dove's king-size chocolate candy bar and gave it to the young man. It was his favorite. He was fading in and out of consciousness then, but luckily, he was aware of Kairos's kindness. Thank you, he said weakly as he grasped the candy bar. Kairos spent the rest of his time embracing him while his eyes produced a saline solution. So, what? He was curing him with a solution or something? He was crying, genius. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Kairos, don't be sad. You've done so much for us. Look around, we're standing here alive and kicking all because of you. Upon hearing the D-Class's kind words, 2295 looked up at them with its beady eyes. Yeah, look at me. I've also got these awesome colored patches all over my body. It's better than any tattoo I could ever ask for. D-3452 patted on its head and wiped the liquid around its eyes. As soon as D-3452 retracted his hand, 2295's eyes got soaked again immediately. It reached out both its stubby hands towards the humans. Oh, come here, you little fuzzball. You've done a lot of good, Kairos. More than enough. Be proud of that. I know I am. Together, the men and the teddy bear embraced each other in silence. Saline solution rolled down its cheeks once more. <laughs>